towards the end of this boycott, in the third year, after about three years, the Prophet ﷺ receives revelation that that document which these pagans signed and it's concealed in the house of the mother of Abu Jahl, this document has been eaten by termites. God sent termites to eat the paper of the document except the name of God. Because remember, pagans, they believed in God and idols. So whatever was false in that document and attacking Bani Hashim, the termites ate it, only the name of God was kept intact. Allah informs the Prophet. What does the Prophet do? He goes to his uncle Abu Talib. He tells him, my uncle, Jibra'il has informed me that their document has been eaten by termites. Abu Talib comes out of the valley. Pagans are surprised. Ah, Abu Talib, you're giving up. It's about time that you come and negotiate with us. Is it starvation? What took you out of the valley? Is it jur, starvation? He says, no, but I've got a deal that I want to make with you. They're now excited. They thought he wants to, wanted to compromise because he was the pillar supporting the Prophet. So when he came, they realized, okay, the Muslims can't handle the situation. He told them, I've got a deal to make with you, but for me to make this deal, I want you to go and bring the document sealed. Don't open it. Bring the document that you signed, put it in front of me, and then we'll make the deal. Look at the shrewdness of Abu Talib. They go to the house of Umm Jahal, it's completely sealed. Like if someone had taken a look at the document, you could tell from the broken seal. They brought the document, they placed it before everyone's watching. This is by Masjid al Haram, everyone's watching. When they put the document, he told them, look, I've got a deal. My nephew Muhammad has informed me that God has informed him through Jibra'il that God had sent termites to eat the document. Here's the deal I, I want to make with you. If he's truthful, now you open it and see. If he's truthful, that indicates we're on the right path and you should stop your aggression. You can't continue like that. If he's lying, I'll hand him over and kill him, finish him off. Deal? They're like fabulous deal. Because they didn't believe in the Prophet, many of them, you know, the shaitan plays with their mind. They're like, wow, he's actually giving us a chance to kill Muhammad. And Muhammad doesn't have the knowledge of the unseen. How does he know what's happening in the document? They accept the deal. Everyone's watching. He says, okay, now you guys open the document. All of you who sealed it, you're 40, come. First of all, he told them, do you recognize that this is your document? This is your seal. So later they don't say that this was another document. Before he told them what the deal is, he told them, is this your document, your seal? They're like, yes, we recognize it to be our seal. He says, okay, now open it. They opened it, what did they see? The whole piece of paper was eaten by termites, except the name of Allah. At that point, all the Muslims said, Allahu Akbar. And Abu Talib told them, okay, Allah has shown you a clear sign, stop. Tens of people became Muslim. Now Abu Jahl and others said, no, let's still keep the boycott. After making a, making a deal that if Muhammad was truthful, we'll let you go. However, there were some members of the Quraysh who couldn't take this anymore. They sided with the Muslims. They, they told Abu Jahl, look, we will no longer respect this document. We made a deal with them and we're not going to enforce the boycott anymore. So the boycott crumbled. And the Bani Hashim and those early Muslims, they came out of the boycott and now they were in Mecca. Look at Abu Talib, you know, next inshallah we'll examine the faith of Abu Talib because other schools of thought consider him to be a disbeliever who died as a pagan. Next we'll examine that in detail. But look at the faith of Abu Talib, how much he trusts the Prophet such that he told him, look, if he is lying, you kill him. How much faith he had in what the Prophet told him and they consider him a disbeliever. When you have a pillar like that, who believes in the Prophet so much, who makes such a deal. Is this a person who did not believe in the message of the Prophet? Who did not believe in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yes. Yes, this, this incident is narrated in Sunni. So, so Sunni historians have documented this incident. 
Now they tell you, yes, we don't deny Abu Talib supported the Prophet, but he just never believed in the one God and in Islam. Well, we'll examine the uh, discussion on that. In any, way, in any case, the boycott is now over. But remember, the pagans, of course, they don't stop their persecution and harassment of Muslims. A delegation from Habasha comes to visit the Prophet after this event. Remember Habasha, Abyssinia, the Muslims had sought refuge there. Their king, Najashi, um, he was a very just king who gave them refuge. Ja'far ibn Abu Talib, he was their leader. We talked about that. So during those days, a delegation of about 20 men, as Ibn Ishaq narrates, came from Habasha. Among them were some Christians. They had come. They were led by Ja'far ibn Abu Talib. So Ja'far, with a delegation of 20 men, they come to meet the Prophet in Mecca. They find the Prophet in the mosque, they meet him, they speak to him, while the Quraysh is by the Kaaba observing. After the Prophet invites that de delegation of Christians to um, embrace the religion of Islam, they believe and embrace the religion of Islam. Abu Jahl opposes them, he attacks them. Imagine Christians coming, believing in the Prophet, Abu Jahl is now furious, he attacks them and he tells them, why are you following this magician? They respond, those Christians, when they see Abu Jahl's stubbornness, they respond to him by saying, peace be on you, salamun alaykum, we will not argue, you stay on your path and let us do what we want. Don't try to change us. In honor of what these Christians did, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals this verse in the Holy Quran. الَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ kitab, Those whom we have given the book, the Christians. مِنْ قَبْلِهِ هُمْ بِهِ يُؤْمِنُونَ They believe in the Quran and the message of Islam. وَإِذَا سَمِعُوا اللَّغْوَ أَعْرَضُوا عَنْ When they hear nonsense talk by Abu Jahl, they don't argue. They turned away from that nonsense talk. وَقَالُوا لَنَا أَعْمَالُنَا وَلَكُمْ أَعْمَالُكُمْ They told them, look, just let us do our own deeds, have our own religion, and you have your own religion. سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ لَا نَبْتَغِي الْجَاهِلِينَ Peace be on you, we're not going to follow you ignorant ones. So a number of Christians, upon meeting the Prophet, they actually... Uh, embrace the religion of Islam, this infuriates the Quraysh to see more and more people embracing the religion of Islam and you know all the way you know all the way to Habasha people are hearing about Islam and they become Muslims. So they were losing more and more power and this infuriated them. Next inshallah we'll examine the Iman of Abu Talib and the role of Abu Talib in solidifying the religion of Islam We'll examine some misconceptions about him. They claim there are verses in the Holy Quran which say he died as a disbeliever. We'll examine that.